Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com. And in this episode of the Automation Minute, I'm going to show you how to set up communications to and download to a Micrologix 1400. But before we get started, I just want to recap that in previous episodes, we took a detailed look at the hardware of the 1400, as well as the LCD on the front of it, and how to use that LCD to look up the IP address as well as set the IP address. So um, we're not going to recover that here because those episodes already exist. We also have three episodes on how to set up serial communications to the uh, Micrologix 1000, 1200, and 1500. And because the 1400 sets up identically via serial like those did, we're not going to redo that here. We're going to focus on Ethernet in this, uh, in this uh, episode of the Automation Minute. Now, um, as far as cabling and software we use, we also have episodes of that as well. So I'll uh, put all those links in the uh, in the descriptions of this video. But um, let's go ahead and get started setting up Ethernet communications to our 1400 and then we'll download a program and test it. So I'm going to start over here by opening up RS links. And up here on the communications configure drivers, we have two Ethernet drivers. We have Ethernet devices and Ethernet IP. Now, Ethernet IP that driver will attempt to find our PLCs automatically. But things like firewalls can interrupt that. So um, we can also use the Ethernet devices driver that allows us to manually put in the IP addresses. So um, let's go ahead and try the Ethernet IP driver first and click on Add New. I'll leave the default name and click on OK. And now here it's very important to choose the correct network. If you're I'm going to choose Wi-Fi, you got to make sure that somehow your, your Micrologix is connected to the same network as your Wi-Fi. Um, I'm going to choose Wired because that's the network I'm connected to my micro using. So I'll click, uh, select that and click on OK. And now we can see it running, so I'll click on Close and double click on the driver here. And here you can see it's found three PLCs actually. It's automatically gone out there on the Ethernet and looked for Allen Bradley PLCs and it found the Micrologix 1100. A 1400 and even a compact logics I have. Okay, so we want the 1400. Now we can see this address, it's 192.168.1.66. So let's use that information to set up the other driver. We'll go to Ethernet Devices, click on Add New, leave the default name, and we will type in 192.168.1.66 and click on OK. And we'll click on Close. And if we open that up and select it, I usually say give RS links 10 seconds to find what it's looking for. Now, I'm from the Northeast. <laughs> That's like a inter eternity, right, for, for us people in the Northeast, right? But um, have to have some patience. We gotta relax. And we can see it first came up with a yellow question mark. Now we got a red X, but we're gonna wait. And now we can see in mere moments, we're gonna get yes. We got these no red X. We got a picture of our micrologics. We're good to go. So that's how you set up that driver. And I only use that driver when the Ethernet IP driver does not automatically find the PLC. Again, if the Ethernet devices driver doesn't work, then you need to stop pinging your PLC to make sure it's even on the same network that you are on. So with that, we're done with RS Links Classic. Let's go over to our RS Logix. Now I'm using RS Logix 500. You do not have to use RS Logix 500. Despite what AB.com says, you can actually use RS Logix Micro Starter, it's like 10% the cost of RS Logix 500, to program your Micro Logix uh, 1400. So um, keep that in mind. If you don't have Slick 500, there's no reason to buy RS Logix 500. But uh, since I have it installed, I'm going to use it. I'm going to go to File New. I'm going to scroll down to Micro Logix 1400. I'll choose a Series A. Click on OK. And um, I'm not going to change any of the channel configuration information. I'm not going to set up any board rates, parities, or addresses. Um, and I'll show you why. This is just a test program, so I don't need to change that. And I'll show you how in a minute, why that doesn't matter in a minute. But um, in any case, I'm not going to, I'm going to actually put in a quick little rung here to test our outputs. Um, this is not meant to be a ladder logic tutorial. If you want that, you might cover that in gory detail in my, in my uh, courses, ladder logic programming, controlling motors, photo, I, photo eyes, the whole nine yards. But here we're just going to put in a quick rung. Um, I'm going to start with an XIO, and we're going to look at T4 colon zero slash done. Then we'll start a branch, and then we will go 
and put in a timer for T4 colon zero with a one second time base, a thousand preset and zero accumulate. And then on the next branch, we'll use a move to move that timers accumulate value to our outputs. And then we'll end the branch and there we go. So this is our little test routine here and we'll uh, verify our project, make sure everything's valid, it is. So now we need to download this program to our 1400. Now, a lot of people gravitate towards this dropdown. I, I don't use that because if you haven't already set up your driver, it's not gonna work. So I always suggest using comms, system comms. That'll bring up a window that has the RS2 from RS Links in it. You can browse whatever driver you want and then choose the PLC you want, okay? So in this case, I want my Micrologix 1400 and I want to download. Okay, it's asking us to save our project. Oh, we already have one with the same name. We'll overwrite it. it says, do you really want to download program untitled designer for a 1400 series A to a 1400 series B with a program called IC14 demo in it? Yeah, I do. And now it's saying um, your project is set up with a different Ethernet IP address than, um, than you currently have selected. Do you want to change your project to match what you're doing right now? Yes, I do. So that'll save the settings I'm currently using into this file, offline file. Okay, so now it says, now finally it says, hey, your communication settings in your project are different than what's in the controller. Do you really want to overwrite what's in the controller? I don't, because I didn't set up any communications. I didn't give this file an ethernet address. So I don't want to wipe out the ethernet address that's already in there. So I'm going to say don't apply. And now here it's telling us if uh, we change the ethernet configuration, we will have to cycle power to the unit for that to take effect. And that's okay. And now it's asking, do we want to go online? Sure. All right, so we're online. Let's go ahead and put her into run mode. Yes, I do. And now we're in the run mode. And now you can hear the relays. And uh, we're hearing the relays because we're taking the accumulate value of our timer and we're moving it to the outputs. And um, don't know if you can see the LED indicators uh, showing which outputs are on. So let me go to the data table here and we will go ahead and change this to a binary view and zoom in. And now you can see which outputs are on and which ones are off. And now, because that's getting annoying, I'm going to put it back into program mode. And um, if you thought that was helpful and you or someone you know could use training like this to learn all about programming the Micrologics and in turn learn a lot about the Slick 500 at the same time, check out my courses over at theautomationschool.com. PLC Basics 2nd Edition is nearly five hours in length and I totally re-recorded it this year. And um, it averages 4.7 out of five stars. Uh, just got a ton of great reviews coming in. The last couple of months, they've all been five stars. Um, and when you buy these courses, whether you buy them digitally or you buy them on DVD, um, you're going to get support from me. And you're going to get a link so you can download the presentations in PDF format as well as the files created in the course. So if you have any problems, you can just look at my file. Um, all that's for free included with your purchase. Now, PLC Basics 2nd Edition is currently on sale, actually less than the price of a video game right now. And um, that's a really good price, but I know some people are looking for even a better deal, and that's why I broke out my old 2013 PLC Basics course. I cleaned up the video and audio as best I could and, and repackaged it as a two-hour PLC Core Basics course, and it's starting right now on the 20 bucks. And... Um, it also gets, I think, 4.6 out of 5 star rating. And, um, you know, it's my older course, but hey, it's under 20 bucks. So if your your budget's tight, it's a great way to go. And uh, both of these fully supported on the automationschool.com. So uh, check them out there. And if you have any questions, just ask me there. And uh, if you like these free episodes I put on YouTube, well, why not become a premium supporter and support the show? Um, for as little as $3 a month, you can support us and get $10 worth of free downloads in return. Five of those downloads can be uh, episodes of the Automation Minute. So that's $10 of free downloads, five of which can be episodes of this show every month for as little as $3 a month. So check it out. Use the link at the bottom of your screen. 
And with that, that's really the end of this episode. So until next time, peace.